trouble, Commissioner. Yeah, this is the Commissioner, Blade Man. I'm gonna need you to uh, get down to that vintage tractor show in town. Big mullet theft in progress right now. You got it, Commissioner. Any ideas who could be behind this? Oh, uh, I, I think it's that choker guy, yeah. He's, he's no good at all. So uh, you, you need to get down there and stop him once and for all. We're on our way. To the White Mobile! Whoa, 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 hold on! White Mobile's in the shop. We're gonna have to take a bus. Oh. To the bus stop! Let's go! Stop these lawnmower do-gooders once and for all. Alright. What can we make come to life? <laughs> oh, look at this right here. The human blade grinder. To finally grind Blade Man down. <laughs> eh, I don't know. Might be a little too heavy. Alright. There's gotta be something else around here. What else have we got? Oh, the human battery charger. Overcharge them till they explode. <laughs> eh, eh, I don't know. Sounds kinda stupid. Eh, what else have we got? Oh, perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> Oh, crap! The bag! Oh. There was no vintage tractor show today. Yeah, that was weird. Why would the commission call us out on a fake problem? I smell something fishy. It smells like dead fish. Yeah. Oh, it's probably that fish we had earlier. It's in that bucket. Oh, yeah, I've been meaning to throw that out. Sorry, Blade Man. All right, let's get rid of that. Yeah. stop you. Who's that, Blade Man? I don't know, Throttle, but it's almost like it's half human, half shop rag. And that odor it's emitting, oh my gosh, is that thing, oh, does that stink? True. I am the human shop rag. And that smell you're smelling is that egg sandwich you guys left in this pile of rags this morning. So that's not you? No. You're sure? I'm sure. I'm here to destroy you, Blade Man in Throttle. You're next, Blade Man. Pterodactyl here. And today's how-to video is gonna be getting this suffix engine running. Now this is called a suffix lawnmower engine and was on a suffix lawnmower that was made in England and a suffix mower is a real mower it's got a reel on it and from the information I found on the inner screen this one's from about 1968 and this is a model 24A engine so I guess suffix they made the whole mower the engine and everything because if you look at the tag, it says suffix. What does it say? I can't see it. I gotta put my glasses on. It says suffix lawnmowers limited. And this was on what's called a Colt, Super Colt. C O L T, like the Colt, like the Indianapolis Colt, Super Colt. I don't know if y'all remember. But we did a live stream with Mick from Mix Mowers and we showed him this engine that we got from our, our friend Pat, Uncle Pat, we call him. He's not related to Uncle Andy and he's not any uncle of ours, but they call him Uncle Pat. And he doesn't even know how this engine made it here. 
but he had it in his possession and the manifold had rotted off you could see it's made out of some kind of aluminium but it just kind of crumbled and we talked to Mick and Mick said he had one and guess what guess what came in the post from Mick over that Mick Smellas so let's see what he sent us there's all kinds of stuff in here what do we got oh we got this spark plug and what does it say oh it's a torch spark plug and Mick doesn't like torch spark plugs so he said for smashing windows so I'm supposed to take this and throw it and smash somebody's window out that's very nice Mick what else is in here oh some kind of packing material oh this isn't packing material what is this Says Terrell fixes all. Says some kind of face, some kind of face mask for a giant-headed person. What? It, oh, this is a banana hammock. Hey, <laughs> I know what this is. Yeah, yeah, it's got suspenders on it. Says Terrell fixes all. All right, I gotta wear this. Yeah. So for when you're weightlifting, lifting weights, this is what power lifters wear. Nice, nice. Oh, yeah, the main part. The manifold. If you can fix my lawnmower, I will be as happy as laddie. <laughs> Now's your dinner, Mick Smoas. Thanks, Mick. Oh yeah, I want to give a shout out to Riley Boy. Hi Riley Boy, how you doing? You watching the, the video? Your dad sent this to me. And this. I bet you y'all wear these over there in England, don't you? <laughs> All right, so let's see what he sent us. Yeah, that's it. Whoa, that's the exact manifold for this suffix engine. All right, so we got that, but what about the rest of this thing? So I looked this thing up on the inner screen, this suffix mower, this super colt, and it's a real mower, and it's got a roller in the front, and it's got a big roller in the back, and I seen a video over there where some guy had one of these in England, and he had it running, and it was running, and, and sounded like a bucket of bolts being shook around in a bucket it rattled and stuff 1968 you know we had 1968 we had regular rotary mowers we didn't have that thing that's some kind of weird real mower i guess we were a little behind the times over there in england with rotary mowers i guess that was the most popular thing this super cold but anyway let's see if we can get this engine running Ugh. It pulls real hard. So the first thing we need to do is take this recoil off. And in order to do that, looking at the pictures, you got to take the spark plug out and loosen these. Take these two bolts off over here. and recoil comes off all as one assembly so as we could tell look it, it doesn't it's all gummy so i need to spray this with some kind of lubricant yeah see if we can get that freed up where's my wd-40 i usually got it laying here elskins probably took it there it is. So I'm gonna try to spray some lubricant on here. Oh, look at that, look at that, right away. Oh. Just a little sticky and gummy. Rope's not very long, but it should, should be long enough so we can put it back on we can check compression. 
Jack Spark. All right, put it back on and see. This is kind of an odd blower shroud. But you know, they do, they do drive on the wrong side of the road. They probably think we drive on the wrong side of the road. I gotta bolt it back on, let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna spray some lubricant down in here. There. I need to be freeing it up a lot more. I know you're saying, WD-40 isn't a lubricant. WD-40! Yeah, well, it's gonna work for this. All right. So another thing I noticed when I looked at the diagram is the end of this coil wire had some kind of suppressor, they called it, that mounted on the end that went to the spark plug. I don't know what that's for. This thing has got points condenser. So I got a little bit of the wire sticking out here. I'm gonna shove it into my spark tester because there's a wire down in here. And we'll put the plug in. This must be the only part left of that suppressor. Let's see if we got any spark. So get a shot of that, Mr. Cameraman, as I pull on it. No spark. And it also feels like it has no compression either. Put a compression tester on it next. Huh. Got about 70 pounds. Let's try it again. Give it three pulls. That should be enough to start if we can get spark out of it. So let me pull the recoil back off and we'll pull the flywheel off. So we can get to the points of condenser under there. May just have to sand on the points and clean them. Because this thing is foreign to me. I've never worked on, on one of these before. Well, of course it's foreign, Terrell. It's from England. So here's their little starter clutch. This thing was kind of sticking. I'll have to put a longer rope in it. But this thing here's got a couple of slotted screws on it. Oh, surprisingly they're coming off. See, don't be afraid to work on stuff. It's not like I got a ton of these coming in the shop. You know anything about suffix 24A? No, never even heard of it. Think you could fix it? Well, yeah, I'm sure I could. They all work the same. Got an air vane governor on it with a rod, almost like a Briggs. I don't know if it's modeled after a Briggs engine. I don't know if they stole that from them or if Briggs stole it from Suffix. What is that, five, five eighths? Nine sixteenths? Nine sixteenths fits. My impact over here. So let's see, right-handed or left-handed threads? We'll find out in a second here. Not coming off. Let's try going left-handed threads. Ah, see? Left-handed threads. That's why you gotta test stuff like that. And there's a washer. So, how are you gonna pull that flywheel, Terrell? Just like I pull any other flywheel. 
I'm gonna put a flywheel knockoff tool on there, fry on the flywheel, and we're gonna pop it off. Blimey! Well, my Briggs and Scranton flywheel knockoff tool isn't gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the nut back on. And I'm gonna get it flush with the end of the crankshaft. And then I'm gonna use my brass hammer. And I'm gonna put a little pressure on it. Cause I don't wanna break this back plate. Put a little pressure on it with the screwdriver. Oh look, see I can't get in there at the nut. How about my brass bar? Oh, would help if I hit the flywheel instead of the... There we go. You know what that made me? That made me happy as Laddie. Who is Larry? I know a couple of Larrys. They're knuckleheads. All right, we got flywheel off and we didn't damage anything. And some of you are probably going to be commenting that over here in England we have the suffix flywheel removal tool, part number A714321. Alright, so we got that off. All right, I got this thing bolted to the bench with one bolt. Let's take a look see at this ignition system. Wow. Where's the condenser at? What is the condenser built into the coil? Must be. This is a ground wire. Let's see the points. Here's the cam of the points. Here's the widest point right here, I think. They don't look like they're opening and closing. That's our problem. Somebody might have been in here. Oh, they're froze. Look. Oh, look. They're all sticky. All right. Get out the WD-40. The WD-40's got like a solvent in it. And it kind of helps dissolve any kind of sticky residue a lot of times. It's good for that. I know it's not a lubricant because WD stands for water displacement number 40. It's got some lubricating properties. All right. Let's see. Open, close. Open. Close. All right, let's clean them now. Now I'm going to use uh, some brake cleaner on them. Still seem kind of sticky. And I'll get some sandpaper, some real fine sandpaper, and we'll sand the contacts a little bit. And we'll see if we can get some spark. So I got me some 600 sandpaper, automotive type sandpaper. We'll just give it a little sanding. Here filming this video could be home watching a lifetime network. Alright, we'll take one of these cards he sent. We'll use that to kind of clean them.
Now let's put the flywheel back on, see if we got any sparkage. Oh, here another thing, we got this little wick on here. Let me spray some WD on that wick, that'll help lubricate. It's not a lubricant, Terrell. You're killing me. WD-40 is not a lubricant. All right, put it back together. See what happens. As soon as I pick up the washer, I drop. Look at this little mechan. Oh, dropping everything. Mm -hmm. Here, this thing needs to be lubed up. This little might make the recoil work a little better. A little spacer plate that goes on here. There we go. I don't know if I should lubricate that or not. I know on the Briggs starter clutches, you don't lubricate them because then that lubricate makes them stick because the dirt and the dust sticks to the lubricant, it just makes it worse. So we're not gonna lubricate it, we just cleaned it. What did I do with that big screwdriver I got? Oh, found the floor. Like everything else, wanna find my tools, I better just start looking on the floor for them. Knucklehead, get the air vein out of the way. Well, we cleaned the points, and judging from the parts breakdown I looked at online on the inner screen, it appears that the condenser is like built into the coil. And I don't know what that suppressor does that's on the end of it, but we put it back together, and if this thing's got spark, it would make me happy as laddie. Stop it, Carol, you're wearing that phrase out. So well, let's fingers crossed, see if we got spark. No, no spark. Dead. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna hold the plug wire and see. But I may not be able to feel any spark because I'm all dried up inside. Nothing. I don't know if it's the coil or if it has something to do with that suppressor, but we're gonna get a hold of Mick over there in England because he knows about these bloody things. Blimey, I wish it had some spark. So stay tuned. Okay, well, I tried to put a Tecumish coil on here because I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, well, it's on laminates like a Tecumish coil. So maybe I could put a Tecumish coil on there and add a condenser and get spark out of it. Well, I did, and it did spark, but the only problem is the flywheel rubbed on the coil and started cutting into it. And then when you tighten the flywheel nut real tight, then it just locked it up altogether because we thought, well, maybe we can get spark out of it while we're waiting on that one from Mick. Well, this is what Mick sent us. And I just want to say, hey, thanks, Mick. And I want to say, hey, Riley boy. Riley boy, it's me, Pterodactyl. How you doing, Riley boy? I'm talking to you. What are you doing? You helping your dad fix lawnmowers? That's a good kid. So he also sent us some other little bits and bobs. 
like the magnets. It looks like the magnets are replaceable on the one he sent us. See, ours aren't. And he sent us a points cam. And then this is a little window on the flywheel. This is a plastic one that snaps in on ours that comes off. So I don't know if I mentioned this, but this this is around 1968, this engine from a, the lawnmower it was on. It was on a lawnmower, a real type lawnmower. So this is what Mick sent us. The same ignition with the points, everything all tied in. Now remember before I said it looked like this thing burned up? Well, that little bump on there, that little pimple, I'm gonna squeeze it, maybe some cheese will come out. But that little pimple is supposed to be there. All right, so we don't need this anymore. And he said this is a good ignition. Now, another thing I, I looked into was in the parts breakdown on the end of the coil wire, it said it had a suppressor. And I'm like, what is that suppressor? So I was talking to Uncle Pat, who owns this engine. It's his engine. And this makes sense. That suppressor uh, is almost like a resistor. So maybe they didn't have resistor plugs over there in England. And then that acted as, as a resistor, so it wouldn't interfere with the radio and the television while you were mowing the grass. So without that resistor, and if you didn't have a resistor plug, your wife would be screaming, I can't watch the telly. The bloody lawnmower is interfering with the telly. Turn off that bloody mower. Put that suppressor back on the bloody mower because it's interfering with the telly. So we figured that's what that was about. It was interfering with the telly. And if you don't know what the telly is, that's the television. All right, so now we're ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this ignition that Mick gave us, and then we'll see if we got fire. Now this was in the, with the bits and bobs from Mick. So you're probably looking for this. You want me to send it back to England? I don't know what that was for. It was probably on your charm bracelet. It looks like it broke off your charm bracelet. Probably when you were packing the packing the box to send here to America. So I'll, I'll send this back to you. So you can put it back on your charm bracelet. Now, the recoil, the rope was kind of short, you remember? And when we were pulling on it, the handle was so rotted and old that it fell apart. So I put a new rope in it and a longer rope and lubed it up and everything. And then I found this Briggs and Scranton aftermarket handle, which is about the same size. So I'm trying to keep it kind of original. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the recoil back on and then we're gonna see if we got any fire. All right, we're all reassembled. Let's give it a tug on the rope, see if we got sparks, see if that coil that Mick sent us is every, any good. He said it was every bit good. everybody now put the plug in and give it a little help with some carburetor spray and see if it'll run and die and then we'll move on to putting the manifold on it stay tuned that's the wrong spark plug factor now I went ahead and took this clutch off only because, you know, when you start this thing up, this is how this clutch works on centrifugal force. And since we don't have the other part that goes over it, I don't want these things flying out and potentially coming off and, and hurting me or the cameraman. So I went ahead and took the clutch off. And then we're going to check the oil. That's something else we need to do before we start it. And, ah, uh, look at that oil. Oh, uh, it's all gray which means it's probably got water in it. But it is full. It is full of nasty oil. So all we're gonna do is just shoot a little, 
little car fray in it. And if it runs and dies, then I'll go ahead and change the oil and then we'll put the, the manifold on that mix in us. And then we're gonna have to hook up some kind of auxiliary tank and see if we can keep it running. So here's the carb spray. Spray it in there. Give it a little shot. Uh-oh. The suffix engine's coming to life. I don't call it a suffix, it's a suffolk. I'll call it suffix. I'll call it whatever I want to call it. My channel. It's alive, it's alive. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil, or earl, or dinosaur syrup, as I like to call it. My ancestor's nectar. Oh, look at it. There's water in there. Lots of water, mostly water. This thing probably been sitting outside. It's American water though, I'm sure. If it was English water, it'd be beer. <laughs> Some pretty nasty, nasty, nastiness. I'm sure once we get it running, I have to get it hot. Probably change it a couple of times. All right, we'll let that drain while we uh, concentrate on putting the, the new manifold on. So I thought about it and I think I'm gonna rinse out the engine block a little bit and I'm gonna use, I got this red off-road diesel fuel or kerosene and then I'm gonna pump it out with this pump, which we sell, this transfer pump, which we sell in our online store. This stuff, this thing will pump like two gallons a minute, two and a half gallons a minute. And I'll put the dipstick slash filler plug back in and shake it around. You know how James Bond likes his engines? He likes them shaken, not stood. Take the suffix engine, put some casane in there. I like mine shaken, not stood. Yes, sir, Mr. Bond. Well, who wants to tighten that? I'll do that a couple of more times. Then we'll fill it with oil. And then once we get it running, I'll get it real hot and drain it out again. So I cleaned up the manifold we got from Mick and I did my old hillbilly resurfacing piece of sandpaper stuck, made sure it was flat. And then I had to make two new gaskets then I also checked to make sure this was flat. Now let's take a peek inside this carburetor before we go hooking it up. It's pretty simple. Let's make sure it's not all full of boogers and stuff and water. It might be ruined. Might be getting a hold of Mick and saying, you got, you got carburetor over there? Let me check, mate. Well, there's a little bit of... Oh, this gasket here is deformed. We'll have to straighten that out. We don't want, I don't want to have to make a new one of these. 
We try to get that off without wrecking it. So this is your float and your needle. I can probably just clean that up. Whew. Pretty simple, basic carburetor. Oh, this throttle shaft is frozen. So we'll have to we'll have to get that freed up so we can throttle it up. We'll have to put some lubricant on it. But other than that, this must be some kind of primer thing you push on. It does have a choke. All right, let me get this freed up, clean that out, fix that gasket, and then we'll put it all, put it all together. Well, this is a Zenith carburetor. See, it says British made. Like the TVs. The quality goes in before the name goes on. Zenith. So I cleaned it. I took this screw out, this adjusting screw. I was able to get that out. You notice there's a little passageway here and a hole down at the bottom. And then there's a little passage here and there's another little hole down here at the bottom for that passage. There's a little, little hole here, a little passage here some kind of little vent. And there's also a little vent here. This must be an overflow in case it doesn't seal. It must, uh, must start flowing out of there. Now I was able to get this loose. I sprayed some WD-40 on it and I used a little heat from my torch. I didn't use a lot, I used a little bit and then I kept spraying it with the WD-40 and I was able to get it get it loose and then there's some calcified from water on there on this throat and then this must be like our needle and seat because this is where the float goes so this thing meters the fuel and I like I said I don't know what this thing does I don't know if this is some kind of little primer type deal but that's all there is to this carburetor let's hope when we put it back together it works now the gasket I got that soaking in some warm water to soften it up so that seemed to work, this paper gasket. All right, well now I'm gonna put it all together and put it on and let's see if this thing will work. Well, got the carburetor all back on. Got the governor's spring hooked up. Now that governor's spring was kind of stretched out. So I cut the bad part off. May over rev it some, but we'll see. And I got this makeshift, because it had this throttle. So I got that hooked up. See how it's stretching the governor's spring? Which is gonna put more tension on that air vein. You know, like an old Briggs. So I got that all hooked up. Uh, I got my auxiliary gas tank hooked up and I got the gas on. Now, I'm gonna pick the tank up to see if it's gonna make a difference as far as gas flow, the tank may have to be higher. There's plenty of gas in it. I just want to see if it's going to leak. Oh yeah, see, now it's leaking. It's leaking out that little hole there. So let's set it back down. And then it's going to stop leaking. But it may have to be set lower. It may be like uh, that Briggs Y that I did. 
that uh, fuel tank sat below and it kind of had a siphon effect. So let's just see what happens. So let me throttle it up. And this is a choke. And like I said, I don't know what this thing does. Maybe that pushes on that float. I bet you that pushes on that float because that float floats up to let fuel in. I bet you that's what that does. All right, let's see what happens. Started and died. Oh, this is the choke. Let me close the choke. in the screw. See what happens. Oh, it didn't die out. It ran longer that time. Let's go get some more. ran out of fuel. Well, it's not leaking out of that hole. Let me see if I can prop this thing up higher. Maybe we can keep it running. I gotta find something to get that higher somehow. I gotta rig that up. Give me a minute. All right, we got the exhaust fan on. If you hear that noise in the background so we don't kill ourselves with carbon monoxide. So I uh, clamped it to my, my weed eater uh, stand and it's not coming out of that hole anymore. Well, let's choke it and see what happens. I'm gonna push that little primer thing again. Choke off. Woo! 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 came first. I don't know if they copied Briggs and Scranton or Briggs and Scranton copied Suffolk. Maybe they're not. And Briggs and Scranton stole our engine design. Let's get them. Let's go over to America and get Briggs and Scranton. Hey, look, it's not leaking or nothing. That is awesome. Man, I thought for sure we were going to have a lot of problems. We got no air cleaning for it. But now all Uncle Pat's got to do is kind of clean it up and 
Give it a lick of paint, as they say over there in uh, England. Give it a lick of paint, Pop. And make sure you hang on to all these bits and bobs that got sent to you. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Carol fixes all that's me, the crazy hillbilly with this... With my uh, man hammock on that I got from Mick. Thanks, Mick. Go to our web store, buy some Carol apparel and some stuff. Check out Mick's mowers if you don't already know about them on YouTube. You know, one of these days we're gonna we're gonna take a trip to England. We're gonna visit these guys. That'd be awesome to go over there and visit these guys. Uh, follow me, but you suck out engines on Facebook and Instagram. Run on the blind, all that riff raff and rubbish. <laughs> and as always, there's your dinner. Dinner is served. That made me happy at Laddy. Woo! Suffolk's engine running! Let's start it again. Got a little pumper thing. Woo! That is bloody awesome. What do you got? Is that all you got, Blade Man? Once again, Blade Man and Throttle. Scammer! I should have known you were behind this. Yeah, I should have went with the human blade grinder, so I could have ground you down once and for all. Ah! 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 I'm out of here. But you're letting him get away, Blade Man! Stop him! Ha! I bet you if we go to the local laundromat, we can find him. Speaking of which, Grab that jar of change of mine and all those dirty rags. We got worsen to do. I am the human shop rag. And that smell you're smelling is that uh, egg sandwich you guys left in this pile of rags this morning. Trip! <laughs> And that smell you're smelling is that egg sandwich. You. <laughs> I got to unfurl it and put it on myself. Come on, Blade Man. Needs a good bath. <laughs> I bet we can find them at the local laundromat. Speaking of Speak which, right? No. Ha! I'm sure if we go over to the local laundromat, we can find them there. Speaking of which, okay. grab yeah. those rags from my That's what I was getting ready to do, and he interrupted me. Hello, I'm here to stop you.